Okay, so this video is just going to be a little supplement to the sample IB exam paper one question number seven that we had done previously. And in that video, I gave this formula and I said, I was pretty sure you don't need to know U substitution, you just need to know the formula. But someone corrected me and said you should definitely know U substitution on the IB exam. So I'm just going to do a quick little review. So again, I'm going to go through it a little quickly because I'm assuming if you've taken, or if you plan on taking the IB exam, you have seen U substitution. And I've got a million videos um, um, as well about U substitution if you need to see some extra examples. So, okay, let's jump into this first one. I'm just going to do indefinite integrals. So notice, right, there's no numbers like we had, but we can talk about that briefly too. So for the first one, we're going to integrate the expression 1 over ax plus b. So again, recall that a and b are constants. So the formula that I'm that 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 uh, I'm kind of uh, bouncing off of is that I know that one over x dx and instead of x, a lot of times they'll use the letter u because we're doing this what we call a u substitution. If we integrate one over u, that's going to be the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u again plus c because we're doing an indefinite integral. So I'm looking at this stuff on the bottom, this ax plus b, and I think well. I could do a relabeling here. If I just called all of that u, I would have ax plus b, and now I compute a differential. So you're, you're basically taking a derivative of each side. So the left side will just get 1 du. Now ax, again, a is a constant, so this is like having the derivative of 10x or 20x or 30x. You would just get 10 or 20 or 30. So in this case, our derivative is just going to be a, and b is a constant, you know, 1, 2, 3, 40 million, pick your favorite number. The derivative of a constant is just 0. And then we tack on our dx. So I think in terms of the relabeling, this is going to be my u. Well, I need to relabel, and notice we've got this 1 on top too. We've got this 1 dx. Well, on the right side, I basically have a 1 dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by a, or equivalently multiply by 1 over a. So I'll have 1 over a multiplied by du. That's just going to equal dx. And that's going to allow me to do my relabeling. So again, I've got, so my 1 over, uh, my 1 dx, which again, I've got 1 dx right there. My 1 dx is going to be my 1 over a du. And then I'm going to be left with 1 over, and again, we said this stuff on the bottom. That's what we're just relabeling as u. So I can rewrite this. This is a constant. We can pull constants out in front. So we'll have 1 over a, and then multiply by the integral of 1 over u du. And now we're just using our formula that's directly above it. So we'll have 1 over a multiplied by the natural logarithm of u plus c. But now again, we just substitute our, our uh, u value back in. We, we replace it. So, right, we started with x's. That's our, our variable. And we want to finish with x's. So I'm going to have 1 over a multiplied by the natural logarithm of ax plus b and then plus c. And that's where this formula that we saw up here, that's just where it's coming from. So honestly, this formula, I guess I've seen it enough to where I remember it, but the important thing is I know how to derive it really quickly by using u substitution. And, you know, if we had a definite integral, just like we did at the, in the original problem, 0 to 4, you would just plug in 0 to 4, and then you would evaluate it like we did a second ago. So... So that's u substitution. So let's do a couple more. So usually if, if there's something I'm not sure how to integrate, if I don't just know a formula for it, so again, like if I saw 1 over u, I'm like, hey, that's natural logarithm, done. Um, if I saw something a little different, like this one, or, well, like any of these, the very first technique I think about is u substitution every single time. Because the other integration techniques can be more tricky, and usually a lot of times this one works, so it's a good place to start. And if it doesn't work, you can usually reason that out really fast. Okay, so here we've got the integral of, and I'm going to rewrite this. This is sine squared of x times cosine of x. So that's, again, just sine of x squared. 
multiplied by cosine of x dx. And these are kind of, uh, I, I certainly set these up to work out nicely. You, you can certainly find some more tricky u substitution problems, but I don't think the ones you would see on the IB exam would be too crazy. So, okay, the thing I'm thinking is I've got sine and cosine, and those are almost, I mean, the derivative of sine is exactly cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, but I can, I can deal with a coefficient. I can get rid of a negative. That's no problem. So I'm not worried about that. But notice if I let, if I just let u in this case equal sine x, well, I'll have my du being cosine of x dx, and that's great because it really just knocks everything out, right? This is going to be my, my u, and this part, the cosine x dx, that's going to be my du. So now I've got my relabeling ready to go. So this is going to be just the integral of u squared du. And well, I know how to find antiderivatives of, of a, an expression like this. We just add 1 to the power, so u to the third, and I divide by that exponent, so u to the third over 3. I put on my plus c. But now I do the same thing again. I have to get, you just, just replace your u with what it was substituted with. So, whoops, so my u is just going to be equal to sine of x. So we could write to the third power. That's totally correct and proper. A lot of times people will just write it sine to the third x. Just a couple fewer symbols, right? You don't have those parentheses. Makes it a little more, a little more clean looking. So that would be our antiderivative. Sine of x to the third power divided by 3 plus c. So this next one, if you were a masochist, you could really just multiply out x squared plus x plus 14 to the 10th power, and then you could distribute by 2x plus 1, and you, you could be off and running, but you don't want to do that for sure, right? So, right, usually when you have something raised to a, I don't know, I, I'm doing air quotes here, a big power, 10's not that big, but again, you wouldn't want to multiply this out. Um, when you have something like that, a lot of times, again, think about a u-substitution. So notice if I let if I let u equal x squared plus 1x plus 14, and notice I'm not going to include the power of 10 here. I'm just letting it I'm just letting it be the expression inside the parentheses. Our du, well that's going to be 2x plus 1. Again, the derivative of 14 is just 0, dx. And hey, again, okay, I, I obviously made these to work out nicely. So there's going to be our du. So we've got 2x plus 1, and then our dx is out to the side. So we're off to the races. So, okay, so the 2x plus 1 dx, that's just going to be replaced with du. So I'm going to put that out to the side. And then our expression inside the parentheses, x squared plus x plus 14, that's just going to be our u. We still have to include the exponent, though, because we didn't really accommodate that. But So now we're just finding the antiderivative of u to the 10th. Well, just very much like the last example, we'll add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, tack on our plus c, and then we can just relabel this. So... So our u, we said again, was x squared plus x plus 14. And again, now we've calculated the antiderivative. So there's a quick little review of u substitution, just in case you need to see it. Again, I've got a, 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 a bunch of videos on these, so if you need to see more, certainly feel free to poke around and you'll find ample, ample examples of these. Some, again, are, are pretty basic, and sometimes you have to be a little clever when you use u substitution. So I think the ones, again, on the IB exam should be relatively, relatively straightforward, but this is a good technique to know because, again, if you don't have this that formula memorized, you can easily derive it in about two seconds if, uh, if you feel comfortable with u substitution. So, okay, um, I hope this helps. Thank you very much to the commenter in the previous video that pointed out to me that u substitution is, is uh, something that you should know, so I appreciate that very much. Thank you very much, and um, yeah, I hope this helps.